Hi everybody, uh, welcome to our watercolor class on YouTube. Uh, my name is Keith McGuire. Mark Hicks is behind the camera there. Actually, uh, we have a different situation. We're, we're um, what are we doing, Mark? We are video teleconferencing your class now. Woo! By the Which, miracles of the internet. Look, yeah. you're over there. I am here. Exactly. We're not in the same room. Crazy. Which, it makes it great because I don't have to drive, so um, I can still sit in the comfort of my own home. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with, uh, this is a 5 by 7 watercolor. We're just trying to get things started again, uh, kind of warm things up again. So I'm going to try to do a quick, and uh, which is counter to everything I am, nothing's quick according to Mark, um, but it'll be quick for me, uh, 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 of a, uh, a barn, a little winding path up to an old barn. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with uh, the sky. And I am going to, I'm going to put my finger in here, I'm going to bring it all the way down to the horizon. I'm going to paint it all the way down to the horizon. And you might see trees and stuff in there. But it, I think the colors will be light enough that it's not going to be an issue. And we'll be able to, uh, you know, just paint the trees over top. That way uh, we're not painting around trees, which just looks like poop. Um, yeah. Just saying. And then you get the little halos and stuff yes, if the paint exactly. doesn't. <laughs> uh, auras. Auras. So anyway, I'm going to grab a brush here. And I'm just going to wet the background first. Only because watercolors work really good on a wet surface. They move around. What I like is uh, they kind of do their own thing. And you just kind of guide it as best you can. If you like something, you leave it alone. Uh, if you don't, you, you kind of adjust it, so to speak. Anyway. So I don't know if you can... Oh, you can see the wetness. Yay! All right, that sounds terrible. Um, but I think you get the idea. Now, I'm not going to... I'm going to make this kind of a happy, pleasant... Happy, pleasant uh, background. I'm letting the... Uh, I am letting the water suck in a little bit. does look a little, little moist on top here, but I think we about got it. Anyway... All right, put in the comments now, guys, what subject or what piece of this drawing will be dead? Will it be the trees? Will it be the grass? Will it be the wood barn? Something in this photo image will be dead or dying. Uh, put your guesses in now before yeah. we get started. You didn't see the raccoon right here huh? and smashed on the highway, right? Yeah, yeah the so. tape's covering it. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fool you. Mark, I've learned how to use the color green. It's kind of exciting. Uh, Ooh, so new paints, huh? You got a new set? <laughs> yeah, I got, I got four new colors. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm gonna, I got to find the color I am looking for. And I believe this is it. It is kind of a um, cerulean blue. Is what, it's not kind of what it is. It's cerulean blue. For me, that's happy sky country. So I'm just going to, I like to start at the top, get it a little bit heavy, not super heavy, but darker on top, and then kind of drag it down, ooh, much better, and then drag it down to a, a lighter horizon, and if you're going to have like clouds or something like that, a little bit of pretty poofiness in the sky. Uh, I believe that's one of my technical terms. All right, how is that? Can you see that? Kind of. Yeah, it looks pretty shiny. Um, it's like you have a light right above it. Yeah, I do. I'm going to experiment. Dun, dun, dun. That didn't help. Uh, I'm afraid if I take this light away, it's going to be dark. <laughs> How's that? Well, the shine's gone, but it is a little darker. Yeah. That's not bad, though. I mean, compared no. to what I'm, what I'm doing. Let's try that for a little bit. Let's see if that'll work. All right. 
So like I said, what I do is I'll come in. I like to leave a little bit of white here and there, but you have to remember if it's this wet, you know, it's going to move. The paint's going to move. So you want to maybe leave a lot of white and let it blur out or blend out with the uh, with the with the water um, but yeah I think that's okay so at this point if I want this to be like this I am going to uh, I'm just gonna I have to pause and let it dry so um, so I'm while it's drying let's just uh, if it's your first time here guys we do put uh, the black and white line drawing for a lot of these up on the website that you can download and follow along should have mentioned that at the very beginning but take a second and download it now and play catch up uh keith what uh what paint are you using today are those daniel smith those schminkies uh, windsor today newton I'm, today i'm using daniel smith okay. and uh, they're a good reliable um you know uh company been around a long time uh i bought their uh pan paints just because I really like pan paints, so and they seem to be of a just a good quality. So, what can I say? It's it's Daniel Smith. Uh, and then your paper uh, today is always arches. Uh, uh, this happens to be a 140 cold press, uh, and um, 140 cold press arches, 140 cold press. Um, any others? Uh, what's your brushes? Uh, King's Art. They have a nice set. Get it uh, from King's Art itself, or you can get them on Amazon, too. I think they're cheaper on Amazon. So uh, They're great brushes for, I think, a very fair price. You just watch for the sale. Because the one you're using seems to be a pretty thick bristle, like a lot of bristles. Oh, they send you. Yeah, they send you. Yeah, this is a... What is this? A ten? Let me look. Yeah, it's a ten. Um, they they have a set you can get from two to I think it's uh, fourteen. Nice big brush, you know, and you can get it all for uh, for like thirty five, forty bucks. That's incredible, and they're good brushes. So just just saying, they are called. Uh, this is King's Art, but they're called Original Gold. And they're the 9020 Max Rounds. Okay. So, uh, right, as you can dry see, yet? Ha, as you can see, <laughs> there a blow on it. Yeah. Uh, there, it's um, it's drying. It's you can see it's absorbed quite a bit now. Um, it's still. And that's why you want the thicker paper, guys. Just uh, again, new tip. Uh, thin paper gets wavy, and this will get wavy eventually, but not as bad as uh, like printer paper or some of the thinner, cheap dollar store art papers. You want a nice heavy paper so it can absorb the the moisture and not deform and become a wobbly mess. And and th these guys arches have been doing this since 1492. Um, they know their paper and they're very good at it. They have a regular cut. They have a regular white, and they have a bright white. And I've been working with the bright white. I'm happy. Uh, it is. Uh, it's just. Uh, it, it takes a lot of abuse. Um, it, it's fourteen nine. You said fourteen ninety two. Yeah. One four nine two. So that's like two years before you started. Yeah. Just. Just listen. A couple more years, I would have had them beat. But they've been around. Um, I do like. Uh, it's you can abuse the paper you can scrub on the paper it's just it's a tough paper it's a good paper it's made out of 100% uh, rag cotton okay and uh, it makes a difference regular paper it's sort of like you know your Strathmore's or whatever your your basic stuff you might get at Michael's um, they uh, can send they it's a wood based you know it's a paper base it's not cotton so it's not the same you can't it's not as absorbent this paper is really great for you can put a lot of layers of color on it 
Whereas you can't do that with uh, the paper-based, uh, you know, the wood-based products. Because, it, you know, after a while, it, you put some down, you lift it up. You put <laughs> so it, that's great. That paper's great for doing real quick sketches and stuff or, or fast, loose watercolors where you're like one stroke and you're done kind of thing rather than trying to put layers on layers uh, like we're doing today. So anyway, I think this is about dry enough. If it isn't, I'm going to actually use it. I would end up probably wetting this, okay, again, because I'm going to go in. Well, let's, we'll check it out. Give me a sec here. Um, that is definitely the wrong green. Woo that would not have been good. So I've got a um, uh, basic sap green here. And I'm just going to tap a little few. Oh, yeah, it's still wet in there. I really don't want to make huge blooms or anything. So I'm going to come down. It looks drier down here. It is. It's a little bit drier. And I'm just going in and I'm going to hit it with a, just a little bit of color. Get this thing going. Get the, get the uh, vegetation in or at least kind of get it started. So I've got some background trees here. Um, and, and leave a little air here and there too so that the tree, so that the, uh, the sky can kind of show up behind the trees too. If you fill it all in, it's not as fun. Trying to go for realism uh, in a quick, fast, down and dirty watercolor. And another little note, guys, is this line drawing is a lot darker than it should be. Uh, he drew it a lot darker, so it showed up on camera, which is also going to mean it's going to show through the paint to a degree. Uh, when you do yours, when you trace it, or if you just print it straight out from our uh, uh, supplied uh, scan, it, do it, it light. Do it as light as humanly possible so that you don't see it through the paint. All right. So as you can see, it's it's still like I said, I would have wet this again just to start because I'm working a little bit wetter, a little bit looser. And what you do is you just kind of keep building up color. Now, and I I, I do I have had a little fun of late working with wet on wet. I finally realized that I think I've just been a little too dry most of my life. So I've been enjoying this and uh, coming up with uh, new techniques for me. So I immediately kind of pass them on to you guys. It's not like I'm reinventing watercolors or anything. I'm just, I'm reinventing my watercolors. I think it would be about the best way to say it. All right, so as you can see, just going in real quick, hitting it with a little shadow here and there. Yep. This guy got a little dark, but I think I will use that. And as you can see, I'm not hitting everywhere. I want, you know, but I am kind of keeping it on the bottom side a little bit so that it looks kind of shadowed underneath the tree there underneath the canopy hmm canopies all right um how am i doing on the screen Ooh, you're still on there i just looked yeah i am still on the page all right you'll also notice um i'm still using that big old honking 10 because like I said I'm working wet holds a lot of paint and I can you know I don't have to keep going back too many times to to reload my brush now as it dries as you know the surface dries again things will start as you can see now I'm doing little finer little tippy tip things because it ain't moving anymore so that gives me now here it's still too wet it just disappears so now I'm just going around and adding a little oh I, I just a little more values here and there a little more shadows okay and I was gonna say the uh, 
the color I added to my uh, sap green to kind of get that little bluer, shadowier kind of green is Cascade Green. Ooh. All right, so that's where we're at right at the moment. And what I do want to do is this whole lump looks just a little too bland. So I'm kind of going to punch that up a little bit. And it'll schmear out. And... Look at that. Not, not a bit of brown in there yet. Just saying. Nothing dead either. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, there's dead. Damn it. It's a coming. Yeah, I know. I know. All right. So anyway, at this point, I have to stop. Let this dry. Okay. Um, boom. So um, at this point, you would cut, right? And then come right back. I'm going to blow dry it so we don't spend three hours doing this thing. Okay. Yay! With the miracles of modern technology, the paint has magically dried. Woo! Excellent. So, as you can see, it's a, it's, it's, you know, not re it's all fuzzy and pretty, you know, soft and fluffy. Um, what I'm going to do now uh, for the background is I'm going to go in. I'm going to grab a little smaller brush now because I don't want to be globbing a great amounts of paint anywhere um i'm going to put in my uh tree limbs now i draw or or what not limbs but uh yeah branches and branches the trunks and the trunk thank you I, I knew there was a word anyway um i draw them all the way out i i don't sit there some people they they just you know draw a little bit of the trunk here and there i draw them all the way out and then I add my leaves to the tree, and it just seems to work a little bit be uh, a little bit better for me. So for the tree, I'm going to use um, for the trunk. Did I? Yes. This is. Um, I always feel lucky when I pick the right color. Yeah, they all look black to us. Yeah, and they're very dark. And uh, yeah, I you know I tried to adjust the light. And they still look dark. So, and then when they're wet, you can't see them anyway. So, I'm going to add a little bit of indigo, which is a blue black or a blue, uh, a very dark blue. You know, it's not a black. Um, and then I like to add just a little bit of um, um, burnt sienna, just to gray it down a little bit so it ain't so blue. So, burnt sienna is kind of an orangish color, blue, orange, you know, uh, what's yeah. the... Opposites on the color wheel will neutral themselves out and make more of a tinted gray. Grays. Grays the ways. Anyway, so, as you can see, I'm just going to kind of come up. Now, at a certain point, I might decide, you know, I don't want... You know, I don't want that limb to continue. I'll come up and you know, kind of break it uh, into the into the leaves and weeds and uh, in into the leaves at top, on top. Hey, we haven't done this in a while. I talk funny now. So, all right. So I got another one here. This one is not going to go. It's just going to go into the shrub a little bit, and then I'm going to kind of stop it there. Any rules of thumbs when doing uh, tree limbs and branches and trunks? Okay, here's the tree. <laughs> yes. All right. Fatter on the bottom, and they get thinner as they go to the top, you know? You actually have to work your brush, you know what I mean? I've seen so many people where, you know, where the trunk gets real fat, thin, fat, thin, you know? It's like, stop, don't do that. So, um, yeah, I mean, discipline. You need a little discipline to, uh, and you practice. You practice on another sheet of paper going from, you know, heavier to thinner. Uh, it's not that hard. It's just a matter of, you know, 
people are so anxious to get started okay so I teach and people are so anxious to get started that they you know they just slam away you know grab a piece of scrap paper and give yourself the opportunity to to take a few strokes you know now you'll notice too I am not I didn't wet that again because I want this to be hard sharp lines right so this is this is referred to as dry brush and basically I'm just you know dipping my my uh, brush in paint and applying it to the page now I can mess with it once it's down but right now this is a fairly easy like I said, I don't want to go nuts on the background and all. This is a five by seven card. It's kind of a fun thing, right? So, and that's what I've been doing of late is uh, I've been having fun uh, sending my dad uh, little five by seven cards because uh, he can no longer hear me on the phone. So I just, oh, look, I made a fat. See, I went the wrong direction. See how it's fatter on top? Watch this. It's gone. Amazing. Anyway, I gotta leave it alone for a minute now because it's all wet in that area. But this is, and this is just, you take your time. And I'm not gonna say less is more but sometimes it is, okay? Now, you can see I, I've got value. I've, I've just kind of laid out my trees a little bit, but I can go back in and certainly give them a little more character by maybe shadowing one side or the other, maybe putting a few uh, little cracks or gnarlies into it. I know, that's another uh, McGuire technical term. So, all right. And then, basically, like I said, as you get farther up, you just work lighter, smaller. If you're not comfortable, grab a smaller brush. But don't, uh, don't sit there and put giant, you know, giant limbs up here just keep an eye on your tree make sure you're doing okay what does that mean all right so I've got these in um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get a little I'm gonna add a little more shadow to the to the uh, to the branches now so I'm gonna come in and Now I'm not, this isn't, I'm, I'm painting dry, okay? But what I'm going to do is probably, it's not probably, I am going to, sorry guys, <laughs> going off the page, I'm just going to hit it with a little water. So I start out dry and kind of just punch on it a little bit. So you're not afraid you're going to blur your branches you drew? Yeah, and if they do... Kind of so what almost, uh, and, and and no, I knew I wasn't gonna because they they were dry enough. But if you do, if you you know, just come back later and redo them. Because uh, whatever light gray, bluish gray you used, will be just fine in the in the shadows. So, the other thing, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just creating a, you know, a little more depth instead of it being all just very one value background there you add a little bit of color here's the time too you can also have a little fun with it you can also experiment maybe and I mean <laughs> do this on another piece of paper uh, but you might experiment with putting other colors into it into the wet areas kind of push them around a little so that is wet on wet. I just dropped a little bit of brown into that, into them darker greens, just to kind of vary the color a little bit. So 
Anyway. When uh, you say try on a test piece of paper, you it should still be the same uh, yes, paper. material that you would do a finished painting on, right? Don't try and work your techniques on cheap copier paper. Right. You're going to have to sacrifice a sheet or two of of good watercolor paper just as your your test well 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 i put it this way um n no one just knocks out great watercolors <laughs> there'll be plenty of scrap paper if you know what i mean uh you know there'll, there'll be an opportunity for you to gather uh, scraps and also just uh if you buy the full sheets uh the full sheets on arches is you can buy them in pads but I think the best paper is the full sheets, and they are uh, 22 by 30. So a lot of times I'll tear them up or cut them up and, and you know, make them into smaller pieces. Um, so there's always a little extra somewhere to, that you can play with. So anyway, um, another color that's kind of fun sometimes to put in there is, uh, ooh, not that one. Oh, my God. That was close. Right. Could have ruined the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. That is. Oh, that's what it is. Ha. Huh. So I got a new uh, ultramarine blue, and I didn't recognize it. So I'm, I'm. What I'm doing is just I'm dropping in just a couple other colors maybe some blues maybe a little purple just a, a violet rather just to kind of change it up uh, so that it isn't all just green all right so anyway you get the idea of that I'm gonna and I and I do I still I'll come in and I'll just kind of soften it I'll do it dry and then I'll just kind of poof it you know so it gives it a feeling that it's a little farther away a little softer all right, so at this point, um, I can I'm I can keep going, but I think I want to move on and, and show you doing the road, the little path and stuff like that. Uh, we're pretty far along on the background, uh, but I usually what I'll do is I'll come back later after I've gotten more of the color in, some of the you know getting the building in and everything too. It kind of helps you, you know. You do it in chunks is it happens a lot uh the last thing i do with a watercolor when i finish it is i put it away for about a week and then i pull it out again uh, you get so you're on it so much you kind of lose perspective so well, i think we're far enough along for the back i'm going to go ahead i'm going to start the uh, foreground here now this color i'm gonna, about to pull out it's kind of weird and I don't even know if you're going to be able to see it is is it showing up ah, a little bit a little bit this is titanium white and it's kind of I don't know what color it is it's like dirty <laughs> dirty white <laughs> and I do like putting that down kind of first now it's a little bit opaque, but what I like about it is uh, the colors we're going to put over top uh, works work very well with this uh, paint. So I do. I'm just uh, putting a, like a little base coat on. That's all. All right. You know how I said this was going to be a real quick video? You lied. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So are those supposed to be like trail marks from driving up to the barn? Yes, old tracks, whatever you want to call it. It was probably a path at one time, but now you'll see once I get the, the, the dead grass in the middle. Damn you. You figured <laughs> it, it's still got some life in it, but yeah, these are this will be the uh, where the road is, you know, been worn down to gravel, whatever you want to call it, and then the center is uh, slowly kind of come back to life again. 
Now, I don't know, can you see what I'm doing? I work horizontally. Don't go up and down when you're making roads and stuff, okay? Work horizontally. Apply the paint horizontally. Um, okay, you need to elaborate why. Yep. Because I can't even, it's really, hmm, uh, I got to figure it out. It's like water, you know, um, you got to be able to see the, uh, that it's on a plane, that it's on this plane. It's a, you know, with the, with the land. Okay. I don't know if that's helping. Probably not. Um, where's my dead grass? If it's going straight in, it, 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 it's almost like it becomes a ditch rather than, okay? It, it, it's just, it's a visual thing, okay? And that's all it is. But I really, you know, uh, absolutely recommend. Always work, uh, you know, to your horizon <laughs> vertically. All right. So why can't I get any bright dead grass? I'm trying here. Mark as hard as I can. Ah, oh, there we go. Quiet. Too quiet. Just mesmerized. Is that what it is? Sure. I, I thought you left again when I wasn't looking. I'm trying to figure out why the farmer is drunk when he drives to his barn and he does these weird S-curves. You know, not everything is like Michigan with straight mile roads. You know what I mean? So you can see I've got my kind of golden colors in there. And I'm just gonna poof in a little green just to prove that it was live at one time maybe. A little bit of it's alive. But it's mostly just layers of color. Going back, 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 back. All right, so I'm gonna do the sides real quick of the, let's see if I can get this to, I got the right color or not. Oh, here it is. <laughs> That's what I've been doing wrong. Oh, this is good and dead now, Mark. We should be good. Oh, you saw me. Dang. All right. So anyway, I'm just going to come along the edge here. I'm just going to So the other thing you'll notice, I don't make smooth, straight edges on these things because it's grass or it represents grass and stuff. It's never trim. But this is, you know, it's basically wet on it's 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 dry brush okay but what i do is i'll come back in and i just you keep adding color on top of color and it's not and then it, it becomes a, a kind of a wet on wet thing so i'm going to come in here i'm gonna i'm just bringing the getting a little color on there all right a little of this a little of that and Yeah. You 
And again, just working that hor horizontal. It, if it goes up a little bit, so it looks like the hill, you know, like it's going uphill or there's bunches of grass, even better. This guy wasn't drunk. Are you going to put a little puddle where the ground gave away and now it has a little dip, so there's a little reflection? and Too much work. You said you want to be done today, didn't you? <laughs> no, I actually... All I'm gonna do for that, you'll see what I'm gonna do. Uh, uh, let me get the, let me get this vegetation done real quick. So now I'm doing um, basically dead grasses. And what I like to do is I vary how. Can you see me? Kind of. Getting out of the way a little bit. Um, I vary the direction a little bit. Don't want to see little clumps, right? I want to see. Just grass, you know, lots of it. Uh, you know how people do the, like the fan across? It just, <laughs> no, don't do that. Bad. Bad. Amateurish. If that helps. It's not horrible, it's just, and sometimes they really do do that, okay? Don't get me wrong. But, Just because it does it in real life doesn't mean it looks very good as a watercolor. Um, that's part of what you got to learn about doing your composition on your on your on your work. It does help to um, lay out the the picture I took this from. It really doesn't look like this at all. You want to kind of pick out the best of what's in the picture and omit what you might actually visually, um, I don't know how to say it, visually distract from the, uh, from the watercolor itself. It's not a photograph. All right. So at this point, you were pretty much right, Mark, about it, only it isn't a, it's not a puddle, although, you know, that would work too. Um, but you almost want to kind of come under the, under here, and actually almost kind of create that kind of coming down into the into the rut there, get a little bit of shadow under the grass, that kind of thing. And kind of on the And the other thing you can do now is when you start doing the road is you can, using grays and blues, you can make it feel like it is kind of dipping in a little bit. Go ahead and say it. It is amazing. You're not, you're not even participating anymore. I thought you were supposed to give me faint praise through this. Uh, oh, that's very mistaken. <laughs> I'm choosing my words carefully as not to destroy your fragile ego. I don't know why we can't get along. Because you lie to me constantly. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a technique. Okay. So again, as you can see, I'm just kind of gives it, I, I'm giving it like a little bit of a, a little bit of a curve there just to make it kind of look a little bit like it's kind of dug in a little bit. And then, and only then if you're going to like really put tire marks into this 
or wagon marks, then don't don't make it a hard line, just break it up a little bit. And then, now let me show you over here. Well, you didn't establish, are these, is this dirt that's been worn yeah. down? Is it gravel? Is it? Well, it's not gravel, gravel. It's just, yeah, I mean, old, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know. Just an old path that. I mean, the dirt almost turns white because it's, you know, just dead. Dead dirt. And then, again, like I said, I like to, I will very gently just kind of, ah, uh, I might not be able to do it this second. Let me try. I use the side of the brush and try to just kind of drag it along. It's kind of hard to see now, uh, but... Yeah. Anyway, it needs a lot more um, little details, but for right now, what I'm going to do, why do I keep going off the page? Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the value, I'm going to get the barn in. The nice thing is we can keep going, you know, back to different things and add more and more detail. Um, but for right now, I want to get all my values in, all my color in, you know, so I can then kind of make decisions on how much detail, where, you know, I'm going to let the background fuzz away. What, you know, what am I up to? So I'm going to go ahead and do the barn now. Uh, for the barn, uh, I'm going back to my old favorite, which is the ultramarine blue. Nope, it isn't. It's the indigo blue with uh, a splash of the ultramar uh nope try again uh burnt sienna good god edit no oh no i leave in any footage of you making a fool of yourself uh, i know I, I, that's, that's why i quit watching i was afraid anyway i'm going back to uh i got the ultramarine again I've got a browner version over here. What I'm doing is I'm trying to get enough paint out so that I have to go dipping once I start this. So I'm going to start with... I'm going to do... Hmm. I did do that. I'm an idiot. All right. So I put a branch in there. Um, what I think I'm going to do is not worry about it and then see if I can put it in after. I'm sure I can, but for right now, I'm just gonna kind of wet this down. Just get it ready for painting. Yay, painting with water. This is, it's gonna work. And what I like to do is I'll leave some white areas. I don't, I, I it's almost like I drag my brush. Uh, there'll be other colors coming in and over top, but it's kind of, kind of, I like having it not all one value. Yeah, I mean, if the guy didn't take the time to water his grass, he's not going to take care of his barn. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this was uh, pretty much gone. Deserted, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I also put a lot of boards back up on it. Just... <laughs> So again, I am forced to wait for it to uh, dry. 
this over here, I'm just going to go ahead and make it dark just so it can be seen. We'll go from that. All right. And here. All right. All right. I got to blow dry this. So you will through the power of editing. Um, I'll be right back. Yay. Okay, I've dried this up, and um, Mark, wake up. Mark. <laughs> anyway, I uh, I dried it out, and it uh, it is now ready. I'm going to do a little bit of detail work now. This is kind of fun. I, this is stuff I, I live for. Like I said, we want this thing light, light and fluffy, but to get a cool old barn, you got to get yourself a fine brush and... Practice. Do you like a triple lot? Uh, no, it, it's a two. They don't oh. have triple lots. That, I, I think that would be like what negative hair, you yeah. know, just kind of air. So, what I do is to kind of get started. What I like to do is get under the eaves a little bit so I can see where the where the building is, where the roof is shadow that kind of thing and i like if it isn't quite perfectly straight unless i'm doing a new barn i want it to kind of have a clinky cracky looking not quite right roof anyway now i'm taking my water i don't know if you can see the i hope you can and i'm just kind of blending it down so it isn't a hard line and if i don't hurry it will be so that's why i'm really quickly wetting this side here okay so you can see i've kind of knocked that hard edge off i don't want i don't want a hard edge on because this this is kind of a soft uh yeah it's a soft pastelli watercolor yeah that's a that's a ticket that way i can say i don't have to do all the detail right Sure. It's, it's all loose. All right, so I got that, as you can see. Now, they're, you know, barns, uh, the wood only goes up so high, and then they got to start another layer. So that's what this is, the barn wood, the planks, rather. So what you got to do is kind of, again, I'm really good at not, I'll be darned, that branch is going to disappear, I think. By the time I'm done. And what I like to do then is I'll do that line underneath and then I'll I'll just pull some of that down. Just to get variation on uh, on the on the uh, wood. So I'm gonna I've got a little more brown going now. I'm just gonna add some of that color. Bump, 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 bump. All right. Well, gosh, Mark, what did you do for COVID? Just kidding. I think you're witnessing it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so got some color got a little flavor going um in one section there one door is open here it's kind of hard to tell i'm going to go ahead and try to put a nice shadow in there so it looks like it's no do like an interior light like a thomas kincaid painting where it no. looks like it's glowing it's a good point oh my god I could be the next. It's probably not nice. But he is he is dead, so Alright, so I got that a little darker. 
but I want it too dark. I want it dark up here, so I'm going to do that. All right, so this chunk of the barn, where am I? Great, I can't see my own work now. <laughs> oh, what do we got here? Oh, ah, okay. All right, well, we've got uh, a door. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of plaster that in a little bit. How many more doors does this barn got? Uh, oh, three or four. <laughs> this one goes into the interior and is nice and dark and cool, according to me. Mm. I'm just saying. There's something in the barn there, but we don't quite know what it is, and I don't care. It's an old car. It's a vintage it would Ford. Be a, it'd be a very square one. I'm not sure what it is, but... Alright, so that's... Uh... Now I'm adding water here. And the reason I do this is by pushing the paint, by adding water, it pushes the paint to the edges. And you end up with some fine, excellent line, sharp lines, okay? That's what I was saying about I can get great detail um, in a very loose, washy painting. It just gives it a... It, 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 Gives it that extra watercolor thing. I think that's the cool thing about watercolors is it has that that two that dual kind of soft and hard. Um, so let me get this guy up here. That and there ain't any other paints that. You know what it is? People always say that. Oh, watercolors are so hard. They're not hard. They just have rules. So if you know the rules, if you know some of the game, it's not it's not that hard. And that's Did what you, why we won't hope you to teach show. us the rules? I am teaching you the rules. The wet on wet. Uh, yeah. And that's all I'm saying is it just it 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 has things there's guidelines. Ah, not rules. <gasps> Suggestions. How recommendations sensitive. yeah how sensitive is that come on mm -hmm. that was pretty good right all right kind of that warm and fuzzy watercolor guy i've changed so going in and now putting these really dark darks in right now because it makes it easier to do the rest of the barn Okay, when I start doing the rest of it, rather. All right, and then there's one more section that's kind of weird. It, this is kind of busted out here. So that will go up to there. That's about it. So quickly... Like I said, I'll drop water into each of these just to push that hard edge just a little bit. And it is slowly becoming a building. And I'm sure the term is slowly, right? Are you going to paint like a big logo in that open area in the barn? Because maybe yeah, this was oh. an old blacksmith's... Uh... Yep. Or Coca-Cola, actually. There you uh, go. Drink Coca-Cola. See rock. Is it Rock City? Sea Rock City. All those cool places in Kentucky that we used to drive by. <laughs> we never got to go. My dad, like, oh, hell no. You know, he's got eight kids. He's, you know, I'm sure if we'd have gotten out, he'd have left a couple of us. Uh, ah, the good old days. I truly believe that my dad bought a farm just so he didn't have to take us on vacation ever again. So we can't leave the farm. It's uh, it's got uh, 
It's got animals. What's that have to do with watercolors? Just giving you my personal personal feelings. All right. I'm going to very quickly just switch over. I'm going to do a little bit of the roof. And to me, it's an old, one of them old crappy metal tin roofs. And that it's hopefully rusted beyond. And I don't know if you notice, I do leave air. See the whites? Yep. It's just so that when I go in with different colors, it might be darker, might be lighter. But I've got a an opportunity, no matter what, if I put a light wash over that now, those pieces will still be there. They'll still be here, you know? But they'll be just a tint down kind of thing. All right. Well, da, 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 da. Okay. And then here... I'm going to drag my brush. This is actually a piece of tin. So I'm going to leave that there. I just do a little brown streak across there, let that dry up before I do the rest. And now I'm just going to start doing. Oh, sorry, guys. That's that wrong color I don't want. So I'm going to go indigo. More of the burnt sienna. And a little more indigo. Oh, that'll do it. So you, after you do that, you might want to rinse out your brush because you might be just chalk loaded. And I'm just going to come down. And they don't have to, uh, it's kind of weird, they don't have to all be there. You'd be surprised. So I'll do a few that are not quite all the way down, right? Like I said, just if you practice with your brush, just doing strokes, learning how to manipulate your brush. Uh, it's, just, it's just like anything else. You got to practice a little. Now, what I like to do is I make sure I don't. Uh, I make sure that I get a little different color in some of the boards so they. Kind of varies that tone a little bit. Ain't that pretty? You know, as dead things go, as dead barns go, I'm just saying. All right. So, yeah, I, I'm a big chicken. When it comes to signage on buildings, I've done a few. Ugh. I think watercoloring... Um, typefaces. You know what I mean? Um, yep. Signs and stuff. It's like the hardest freaking thing to do for me. And portraits. Sounds like you need to step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. I know. So that looks a little weird right now. See that big, sorry, that big clump? Mm -hmm. That was just because it was, it was still wet. But what I'll do is just pull a little of it down. I'll take advantage of it. And boom. Let it dry. I'll come in with a few more strokes again. It'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be just fine. 
Now this thing, yes. Yes, all right. And when you're doing old barns, just to be honest, you know, actually the lines don't have to be all that good. <laughs> just makes it look older. You just want to kind of keep it on the thin side if you can. In here. Okay. All right. Well, Mark, if this is the fastest watercolor I can almost do. Almost. I'm just wondering if uh, it might end up being a two-parter. Why? How much more you got to do? Well, actually, it is kind of on the looser, funner side. Actually, not that much more. I could go, you know, a little crazier. And I will show a couple techniques, but I maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just fine. So I'm just coming in over here real quick. I wanted to get this shrubbery in so I could see what's going on. Was that me or you? Me. Good. You have to go, right? No. <laughs> now, Why doing a negative. Blanking? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm blanking on how to spell Strohs. Oh. So, do you see how I did a little negative uh, painting there? So, painting behind using the darker green in front of that golden, uh, you know, the golden grass in front there. As mm -hmm. you can see, you can create, you know, some fine detail, All right? Make it look like grass. And see how I get some dark values into that shrub, and yet there's middle values and light, okay? So white, you can leave white on a watercolor, okay? It, it represents a lot of times when it's plants and stuff it's that reflection on a on a plant so okay things have dried i got to go back in there's a couple things a couple issues real quick um one being see how much that dried how light that dried yeah. so i want to go back in give it a good hit and that's the thing, you don't know until it actually dries. Um, just a fair warning. And a lot of you guys, you know, you've heard me tell these tales before. I'm just kind of uh, reintroducing some things to, uh, to uh, new folks. And that is basically that watercolors dry about 40% lighter, okay, than... Uh, then when they're wet so you think you, you got enough color and everything and you'll learn you'll get a you know sometimes it can't cover you know it just it can't <laughs> and then you'll also you'll begin to realize what it takes to 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 color uh, to cover okay so kind of got that back in I kind of like that I like having a little bit of you can see something's back there but you don't know what quite could be anything all right uh, ma, 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 ma. I did want to try this to show you when I'm doing kind of gravelly kind of stuff I will use the side of the brush okay literally I'm not using the tip at all and what I'll do is I'll kind of lightly 
just drag the brush just so you get a little more kind of dirty texture there okay see yeah, looks dirty so the trick is you don't want too much paint in it um, but you got to have enough or it won't go anywhere and it won't do anything okay so all right I want to go back in I was gonna real quick because despite what Mark said there's not near enough dead grass in this to warrant a McGuire signature. Now that the roof is dry, I'm just going to come back in with uh, the burnt sienna again, a little bit of the indigo. More on the dark brown side than the bluer side. I'm just going to, you know how the metal roofs. See how I leave, even not leave them white. I kind of like that. Now one two three and then what i like to do is kind of come in on those edges where you know where they you know end and i like to just kind of soften that and kind of make it look like rust kind of bleeding down on the next one on the next one on the next one okay so Dun, 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 dun. Now, were those lines penciled in originally? I don't remember. Um, they were. I believe they were, yes. Yes. Um, but, you know, again, it doesn't have to... <laughs> when you're doing kind of a loose, fun thing, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, okay? But you do got to get the angles right. That's, that's the trick. The lines aren't the big deal. You better have those, um, you know... Uh, you know, each end of the strip of roofing metal. What do you call them things? Panels. Sheets? Sheets, yeah, sheets panels. Yeah, panels. Anyway, yeah, it's just they got to be going in the right direction or you're going to, you'll know it. <laughs> you'll look at it and go, why does it look funny? You know? Any drawing that you can do, any it, it's just really helps you be a better watercolorist, basically. Hmm. Remind me to show you a, a tool that I got for doing perspective drawings uh, when you want to have your vanishing points like far away. Way over there? Yes. Way over I always thought that was weird. That's why I, I never liked teaching perspective drawing because it's like, okay, you're going to put a point way off your page here and way off your page there. And it's just, uh, it's always been weird to me. Um, yeah, I found a, I learned a trick with a, a tool and the tool is actually used for spacing out the holes in belts. Like doing leather belt holes and really? stuff. Yeah. That's... But it's a neat technique. Huh. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold then, you to that. Yeah. And after I show you, then we can maybe decide to figure out how to teach it as a video for yes. everybody that's watching right now going, I wanna know the tool too. Yeah, I want a, I want a tool. Yeah. I want tools. Yeah. Tools are fun. Keith's a tool, why not? All right. I think I'm pretty close. Of course, I would go in and probably add a lot more branches, right? Yep. And then we got to seal it with that high gloss clear coat. What? 
Yeah, I want shiny watercolors moving forward. <laughs> Don't make me. Don't. No. 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 All right. What do you think? Am I maybe a little more brown over here? Sure. Sure. You don't care. And honestly, uh, now that I've got enough value on here, you look, this guy could probably use just a little more. Yeah. Just helps. There you go. Well, I'll tell you what. It, it, I think my problem is my trees that are in front here are the same color as my building. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come in with a little of that brown, right? And see if I can just make that tree pop out a little bit. Yeah, I think it'll work. More brown. All right, Mark, uh, as I'm kind of finishing this up, anything we need to know? Uh, well, look forward to more videos in the future. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a like if you got anything out of this. Uh, we are always open for suggestions and creative criticism in the comments. If you're a dick, we will block you. But if you have anything <laughs> nice to say or something, a uh, suggestion that would benefit the community, but of course, put it in the comments below. Uh, and we have a Facebook group where you can share some of your art and get some feedback. Uh, that hopefully will get some momentum again as well. All those links are in the description and hopefully there'll be some more fun stuff coming in the near future if keith can keep it on the camera and not slowly creeping off the edge of the screen where I'm nobody can see again. it i'm back i decided to uh whatever that metal thing or whatever that is you know what i like doing stuff that you don't even know what the hell it is i figured it was an old refrigerator that rusted That's out and and you can see this is a tin uh, along the side of the building there i'm going to add just to maybe a little bit darker again just trying to get that yeah all right and now, so, now i need a little guy in a hockey mask peeking out from behind the tree to the right that's how it starts so now that you know this is my uh what do you call it my secret hideout hmm. where i bring the victims Ooh, ha, ha, ha. of my watercolor extravaganzas all right anyway whoa did you see that all right yes. so honestly guys what i would do is keep making grass keep making a few more leaves and branches um but i think you got the gist of it okay um i will finish it up and you will see it as a finished product probably on the front of it what do you think uh you mean like for the thumbnail yeah yeah and we'll put it in the video too of course okay great just so. um like i said uh you don't want to spend any you, you got the gist of it okay you spend any more time with me you, you'll get bored of me all right hey so. i think for a lot of people this would be a finished piece especially starting out so okay there's good. no shame in this being a, a completed item okay good all right well i feel pretty good then i still want to keep going back in and getting some more lines in there and stuff but i will i'll get it all done um i just want to thank everybody we're you know we were gone for a little while and uh we're uh gonna make a very sincere effort to uh be here a lot more often um so anyway. and don't get mad at if we don't do another thing for a year because he shut likes up, to say we're up. back oh, and then we never come back but the uh okay um <laughs> I'm feeling, uh, yes, much humbled. Um, but, yeah, we, we really do want to do this again, and so we are.
anyway, you guys have a good one. And uh, thank you, Mark. And uh, we'll see no, you. No, thank you. Thank you, Keith. Couldn't do this without you. <laughs> You'd have another artist. You'd find another artist. A better artist. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, thank you very much, you guys. Take care. Bye.